Hello, my name is Joe Brown, AKA Black Phoenix, and I'm your welding coach. And today I wanted to talk to you briefly about worm holes when you're welding flux for Today we was actually doing a test, a student was actually testing, and as soon as he got into his roof, we noticed a lot of worm holes. So we stopped the process and we started troubleshooting, trying to figure out what caused the wormholes. So I know every time, you know, you get into it, you got your groove going, you set, you ready to go, and then you see them that discourage you. You want something nice and you see all these deals and little holes, you're like, oh man, what's going on? So it's a few things I have noticed that could cause that. Now I want to show you on this plate, put my gloves on, this plate is kind of warm because I, had it sitting on top of another one when I was doing these last ones. I want you to just check this out. Hopefully you can see this good. You can see this plate good. But on the front of this cap, he got worm tracks. And even though we was cleaning them out, they still was coming. So I want to tell you how to prevent that. One way to prevent it is making sure you got the proper gas flow. If you don't have enough gas flow, that can cause worm tracks or worm holes. So keep that in mind when you're actually working on it because that can be an issue for you. So you wanna have the proper uh, gas flow on your gauge. And also, you wanna make sure you got the, the proper amperage. The proper amperage and the proper stick out. So on most of flux core wire door shield, it's gonna require you to have at least three quarters to an inch stick out. Three quarters to an inch. So you wanna make sure you got this three quarters to an inch stick out when you get ready to weld. That is very important. I can actually, I'm gonna run one, and if you get too close to the plate, it can cause some wormholes. And if your angle is too much, you got too much of an exceeded angle where it's blowing the smoke out, that can cause it. So you wanna have the proper angle, I say five to 10, if you're dragging it this way or dragging it that way. I say five, really five to 10, no more than 10 with the flux. Another thing that can cause you to worm holes is bad wire. Now, you can purchase some wire and you think that you got something good and you get ready to go, you see you have an issue. Uh, if the wire has been set out in the elements, I'm in Arkansas, so it's, it, it is humid here. Uh, the temperature goes up and down. You know, you don't know what you're gonna get sometimes. So if you leave things out here, you can actually cause some um, uh, issues to happen due to the climate, due to the weather. You can get some moisture inside the wire and that can also cause you issues in the wire. And then I also seen where if you, when you're setting your wire inside of your machine and you have it too tight, where you're actually mashing the flux cord wire, that can cause you some issues. So I had, I was doing some reading, I seen some of that. And some people was talking about the dirt, the metal not being clean, but majority of the time, when you're testing, the metal's gonna be clean. You're gonna grind it out, you're gonna wire brush it, you're gonna have it all shiny, ready to go so you can dive into it. So we know that's not the issue when it comes to testing because we prep the plate before we even dive into it. So one of the things that to just think about is your wire speed, your gas flow, and your stick out with your amperage. So you wanna make sure you got the proper amperage on whatever you're welding on. And if you got too much amperage, if it's too hot, I believe that the heat will push the shielding gas out if you got too hot. So you wanna make sure you're running at the right temperatures um, to prevent any of that. Because like I say, when you're taking a test, you're trying to get your, trying to get the money and pass the test, that's the last thing you wanna see is some worm, <laughs> it's some worm holes. So I'm gonna run one on this and I'm gonna try to get some um, on purpose. I'm gonna see if I run extremely too close that this will help me out. Well, let's see what happens.
see how it turned out. See if I got some. And I ran this one kind of tight. And I can see one on there. I can see a few. That's in it. I ran it kind of tight. I can see a few small ones in there. I don't know if you can see that that well. But I had a few small ones in it. But I'm going to run it right this time. With the right stick out. And see how it turns out. Got no issues on that one. Oh, you, hopefully you can see that pretty good. But I ain't got no issues on that one. Hopefully you can see that. I ain't got it too high. I can't really tell because I'm in front of the camera. Hopefully you can see that. So just for the record, I would say make sure that you got the proper stick out. You got the proper gas flow. And honestly, I will go anywhere from, in my personal opinion, depends on the machine, I will go anywhere between 30 and 40. Um, you can hit that sweet spot. I see some people set it on 40 and some people set it on 35, but I think the not over, not, not to exceed 40, but around, you know, between 30 and 40, I think that you'll be okay. I got this one actually set on 35 and it ran smooth. So, um, a lot of times the wire will require you to have, depends on what type of wire you got, it'll even tell you, you, you got to run this on this wire because all the flux core wire is not the same. Uh, I'm running 035 and like I say, we're in the school. This was some Hobalt wire that we got on this, on this pool. So today, I really think it was the stick out, the two closest to the metal that caused him some issues, but he's been running good beads. We fell back in it, tried a couple things, checked out the machine, the rollers, and also the gas. The gas wasn't set up high enough too, so we turned it up some. So it's a few variables that can cause you to have some problems. But the main thing you wanna do is check everything before you dive into it. Even put you a scrap piece of plate up and run you a couple beads, just to make sure that the machine is set right before you dive into your test because once you dive into it, family, you get to getting on it, you own it, you know. And if you if you spending your own personal money to pass this test, it could be hundred and fifty dollars to two hundred to three hundred dollars, and you don't want to waste your money. And if the place you're testing at, if they know it's bad wire, they're gonna get you some more wire and fix that situation. Uh, I actually did a well test in Tulsa at the Tulsa Tech, and the guy actually gave me some bad rods. And I was welding with him, man, and I just couldn't figure. I said, man, what is going on? I took it to ground. I said, hey, man, something is wrong with this, the, these rods, man. They ain't working right. And he looked. He said, man, man, maybe there is. He came back, gave me some more. Pew! I was gone. Like, they was, they welded like night and day. And he told me, man, I apologize. I apologize. He said, most people would have got mad and asked for their money back and left. He said, but, man, you worked troubleshooted it with me. We realized you had some bad rods. I passed the test. I was back on the road. So like I say, most facilities will make sure that they got proper stuff. But like I say, sometimes you can get a bad batch of wire or a bad batch of rods. It just, it, it is what it is. But just want to stay, um, just wanted to give you some updates on that and just say, stay aware of that when you're working, when you're welding with flux cord and to clean your metal, you know, it's always good. But to check your gas flow, make sure you're not welding too hot. If it requires you to be on 25 uh, volts, you don't really want it on 27 or 28. That could be too hot and that heat can push the gas flow out. So that's something too that I read that said it could cause an issue. So keep that in mind and your stick out. On short circuit MIG, normally you want about a half inch three eight stick out. 
but on this it's asking for three quarters to an inch. That's a lot of stick out, but that's a lot of, uh, it's, it's, it's done like that for a reason. It helps the gas actually flow 